everyone. In this video I'm going to show how to tune a PID control loop and uh, what I wanted to try um, that's different from a lot of other videos is I wanted to show how to do it visually. So I've got here a, a balancing robot that I've been developing over uh, the past few months and um, I finally got the PID control loop tuned reasonably well. Um, one um, thing that's a little bit different about this particular robot is I don't actually have any um, encoders on the wheels, so there is no um, velocity feedback. All I have is the, um, the measured um, angle, the, the pitch of the robot that I am um, doing my PID control loop with. So um, unlike some of the other uh, balancing robots, this one will drift a little bit because I don't yet have the wheel encoders so that it can um, you know, maintain its position. But it does have a pretty good balance on its own. And so if you give it a, a quick input, it'll still recover. And uh, balances pretty well. And then one of the things that I really wanted to try and show was um, how the, the actual um, control loop works um, visually again. So <clears throat> if you haven't seen my earlier videos, basically um, I have this uh, program showing telemetry. <clears throat> and it's coming from the, uh, the balancing robot via a little uh, Bluetooth module. And uh, this uh, top left graph shows uh, a few things. Um, the, uh, the kind of a violet or purple um, line is the pitch angle, which is kind of the measurement of uh, reality. The uh, black line is the set point, which is um, basically the goal. And in this case, because I'm not applying any throttle, and it's just, uh, you know, sitting there. Uh, the set point is basically zero. And then error in yellow is um, the difference between the two. So obviously you want to keep the error as low as possible. I also have the uh, pitch um, shown as a histogram. And then in the middle, I have a uh, chart with the proportional integral and derivative um, components of throttle. And I'll explain that shortly. And then down at the bottom, I have the, uh, the gain or scalar factors for proportional, integral, and derivative accordingly. So in this video, I'm going to show how to um, tune the PID control loop. We'll start with just uh, proportional, or P, and then we'll add integral, and then we'll add the uh, derivative uh, component. And then at the very end, I'll show the source code and kind of walk through it. It's very easy. It's only about 20 lines of code. So, um, see, one more thing I'd like to kind of show is um, the robot can balance pretty well, even in your hand. So, yeah, uh, pick it up. So. There you have it. It can even balance in your hand. Of course, not as well as if it's on nice firm ground, but it can do a pretty good job. Now, if you're uh, if you're uh, if you're not holding it too tightly, any vibration in, um, that it causes in your hand will get amplified, like you just saw, like that. But uh, if you get a good grip on it, it's uh, it's pretty neat. Anyway. And of course, it'll balance just fine on the ground. So yeah, let's uh, start again and uh, look at just proportional control and how to pick the uh, gain and uh, and what it looks like if you go too high or too low. All right, so I've uh, got the robot laying on its back right now, and I took the uh, if you look at the bottom the bottom three charts, I took the uh, integral and derivative part, uh, the gains, and zeroed them out, so they're basically not having any effect. We now just have a proportional. Uh, control feedback loop. And um, let's take a look at how that performs. So, because it has the gain that I uh, chose earlier, it's actually balancing right. But let me uh, try to get this all in frame so you can see it a little better. Let's see if I can get that. Okay, so that's 
It's about as good as I can get. Okay, so if I um, if you look at the bottom left chart, the P scalar or P gain chart, um, well, first of all, let me drive it around, I guess. So you can kind of see that it, it balances okay, but not very well. Uh, you can kind of see that whenever I give it an input, it kind of kind of oscillates a little bit. And that's even with the, the proportional gain set pretty well. If you set it um, much lower, so if you can kind of see now on the on the TV, I've got the gain set at about 5,000. And now it just really doesn't want to uh, to balance. I have to, uh, I have to kind of constantly, I have to kind of manually balance it. Uh, it's just kind of all over the place. So yeah, if your proportional gain is set too low, it's just going to drift. It isn't going to uh, hold its position very well. And it might even flip over. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> if, you, uh, if you raise the gain, so we're going to bring it up towards about 12,000, which is where it was. You can see that it'll work all right. It still drifts quite a bit, but now it can get that in frame. Uh, now it can, you know, reasonably well on its own um, perform. But it still drifts a lot. And then if you set the gain way too high, so you can kind of see right there, the gain is set to 24,000. Um, it balances a little bit better, but then it'll oscillate. And uh, you can even see in the, the graph <laughs> um, yeah, so that's one thing you got to be careful with. If you set it too high, it's uh, it'll get kind of ridiculous. So for my particular robot, uh, a proportional gain of around, um, you know, eight thousand to thirteen thousand works out pretty well. Um, but of course, how did I even get to that number? Um, the thing you want to kind of keep in mind is that, um, as a starting point at least, um, well, here, let me uh, grab the robot real quick. Turn off the motors. Okay, so as a starting point, um, kind of what I thought was if the robot is tilted maybe that much, or maybe even that much, in either way. So if it's like, you know, maybe 30 degrees forward or backward, that it should be near full throttle because it has to kind of, you know, correct and push itself to, to try and get vertical again. Or if it's, you know, that way it has to correct that way. And, uh, you know, and so um, I was looking at, you know, how many radians that was. And um, and basically I, I wanted, I needed a factor that I could multiply by the uh, the pitch angle, which is measured in radians, and, uh, and get that to about 100% throttle. And on my microcontroller, I have the PWM for the motor set up so that uh, full throttle is about 1,000. Um, so, you know, positive 1,000 one way, negative 1,000 the other way. So I kind of started off with that. So I, I found a, a number that I could multiply by radians to get, you know, plus or minus 1,000 when it was like that. All right, so now, now let's look at the um, integral um, portion. So if I take my... Uh, Oh, I didn't mention at the beginning of the video. So these three potentiometers, they let me set the gain. So I have proportional gain here, integral gain here, and then derivative gain here. And then they're being shown on the TV there, there, and there. So if I take the integral gain and I raise that up, so right now I've got it set to about 100, and th or, yeah, right there, around 135. And what that will do um, is, okay, so the proportional gain will set, um, it's basically looking at the current error. So, um, you know, where you want to be, which is your set point, which in my case would just be throttle. Um, where you currently are, which is your measurement of reality, which would be the pitch angle, and the difference between the two. So it's looking at the current error for proportional. For integral, what it does is it, it, it adds up all the errors over time. So it, it integrates them. And what's helpful about that is um, if you have small errors, it will try and compensate for them because the, the, the accumulator will build up big enough and big enough 
that it will finally be able to push enough to really compensate for the, the small errors that have been accumulating. So um, let's try driving around with that 135 uh, gain factor for integral. We can see it's quite a bit better. So now if I if I let go, it will kind of, it'll reasonably well stop. Again, I don't have um, wheel encoders, so it isn't going to stop on a dime and, and uh, you know, not drift at all, but it's quite a bit better. So, you know, again, if I let go, it'll reasonably well stop on its own. And uh, and so you can increase the, the gain. So I'll go ahead and bump it up to, okay, it looks like about four, 460, you can see right there. And then that, that kind of, it helps out, but it also adds a lot of that um, kind of oscillation when you when you let go or anything, anything abrupt, it will, uh, it'll do that. And again, you can kind of see that in the graph, uh, right, right there. Um, and so, let me, uh, let me kind of show up close. So here we have the um, the red line is basically the the amount of throttle that is being contributed by the proportional part of the control loop. So when it's just here um, trying to balance on its own, you can see the proportional part goes from about positive 200 to negative 200. And again, because my throttle is set up so that a thousand is full throttle, that's basically you know plus and minus 20% of throttle. Um, is coming from the proportional um, part. And then the integral part, you can kind of see it's um, it's just kind of adding up the errors. So let me, uh, let me uh, where's my mouse? Uh, where'd it go? There we go. Let me uh, pause time right really quick. Okay, so you can kind of see that when there's error above, uh, it'll it'll accumulate, and then it'll drop back down when the error goes negative, and so it, it basically just accumulates the error. The, the green is the integral part, um, and the error is the yellow part, not not the red. But um, yeah, so it looks at the error, and it just adds it up. So the integral part is basically looking at the past and trying to use the past um, to help you know compensate for very small errors that. Um, without the integral part, you would not be able to uh, uh, compensate for without pushing uh, the robot into oscillation. So the, the magic kind of comes in when you add the derivative part. Let me just show what that looks like first. So if I, uh, if I raise up the uh, derivative gain, again, you can see it right there there. Um, now, when I give it throttle, it, it'll drift a little bit, of course, because I don't have the wheel encoders, but you can see that it, it doesn't, it doesn't um, nearly as much um, kind of jump when you give it an input. And it's pretty smooth when you, when you let go. Um, and then if I turn that up even more, so now you can see I've got it around um, 13, 13, 14,000. It'll work even better. And then if I set it way too high, you can probably even hear that. But I've got it now set to about 24,000 right there. And you can kind of hear the robot is just kind of moving all over the place. And especially when I let go of throttle, you can kind of hear it um, kind of uh, hunting. And uh, what's happening is, so the derivative part is basically looking at your previous error 
and your next, or I mean your previous error and your current error, which is um, you know the derivative of your slope, and it's applying that to try and um, correct for other problems. And so the reason why it's really helpful is the derivative is basically looking at the future. It's um, it's you know looking at okay, so just a moment ago we were at this much error, now we're at this much error, and it's kind of predicting the future uh, the in in the near term. And that's really helpful because it keeps the robot from oscillating. Because if you if you had a big error and then all of a sudden it's getting really small, it knows that you know, hey, I can I can back off on my control input on my throttle, and we, that way you don't overshoot. So that's what makes it really good. But because it's the derivative and it's looking at the change between um, the previous measurement and the current measurement, it's basically amplifying your noise, which you can see in the uh, the blue line, the blue line right here. You can see there's a whole lot of noise. And if you have really high quality sensors, um, you can often turn the derivative gain up very high. But in, in my case, I'm using a relatively low cost, you know, kind of cell phone quality, consumer level um, gyroscope and accelerometer. So there's a reasonable amount of noise in the measurement. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the, uh, the derivative gain down. And now it's, you know, doing quite a bit better. There's still a lot of noise you can see um, in that blue line, but it's gotten to a point where it's small enough that the robot, you know, it's it's hunting a little bit, but it's not like freaking out like before. Um, and so again, um, with this particular balancing robot, I don't have encoders on the wheels, so it isn't going to um, behave nearly as well as ones that would. I do plan to add that later on, but as you can see now, um, it's actually performing pretty well. Um, and so basically, um, the throttle that I give it, which is you know here, I'm basically setting the the angle. The, I'm not setting velocity because I don't have any velocity measurement, but uh, the throttle. Um, stick is basically telling the microcontroller um, the desired angle. Uh, one thing that I kind of forgot to mention earlier in the video, so I'd like to show you how the uh, error looks um, when you just have proportional or proportional integrative, uh, proportional integral or proportional integral derivative control. So um, you kind of see here this uh, top left graph. If you look at the error, uh, which is the yellow line. Um, okay, so right now we just have proportional control. Integral and derivative are uh, zeroed out. And you can see that the, the robot is just kind of sitting there um, doing a pretty poor job of trying to balance. And uh, visually you can kind of see that it looks, you know, roughly like a square wave. And the error is going from, you know, about 0 0.01 radians to about negative 0 0.01 radians. And it's spending a lot of time at both of those places. Now if I add the integral part, so I've got the integral part added in now, and uh, just drive it a little bit. Yeah, so it's behaving about as good as it was when you don't have derivative control. <clears throat> and I'll wait for this uh, graph to auto scale. All right. So now you can see that the um, the error um, waveform has changed quite a bit. We no longer have that square wave. It looks kind of like a, you know an AC coupled uh, square wave. So we still spend. Um, quite a bit of time around 0.01 and negative 0.01 and in fact we're even overshooting quite a bit almost to 0.02 um, but we're spending a lot less time at the extremes we're spending more time kind of near the middle you can kind of see here um, there's a lot more time spent near zero so even though the robot is kind of hunting and not really stable um, it's closer to where you want it to be for a larger por portion of the time And then if I add in the uh, derivative, oops, yeah, 
try to do this one-handed. And then let's uh, drive it around real quick. Yeah, that's kind of behaving the way it should. Um, and then now if we look at the uh, error waveform, again, I'll wait for it to auto scale. So you can see we're still getting, um, <clears throat> you know, plus and minus 0.01, which is, it's not great, but um, that's kind of the way it is for this robot. But <clears throat> it's a much cleaner, more consistent waveform now. And we're spending, uh, again, um, most of the time around zero. <clears throat> and uh, this is, we'll just, we'll just kind of, you know, quickly tune in it um, visually. So if I were to go and um, be a little more careful and do a little more um, trial and error, we could get it even better. Um, <clears throat> so that's kind of how it looks if you are tuning a PID control loop on a balancing robot visually. Um, oh, one thing I forgot to mention. When one of the amazing things about the derivative part of a PID control loop is once you add that in, you can then increase your proportional and your integral gains quite a bit, which I kind of did, but I didn't really, I don't think I mentioned that earlier in the video. So when you add in your derivative, you're going to need to go back in and readjust your proportional and integral scalars. You can probably bump them up quite a bit because the, der the derivative component will help <clears throat> um, prevent the oscillations that would have occurred without it. So I hope you kind of enjoyed that um, visual look at tuning a PID control loop. And what I'll do now is I'll show you the uh, source code for the robot, which I'll also have uh, posted online. Um, and it's a very simple control loop. That's one of the nice things about PID. Um, it's probably, you know, 10 or 20 lines of code. Really easy to look at, really easy to understand, and uh, does not require a lot of uh, um, processing power. Okay, we're back at the computer and we're looking at the source code for the balancing robot and I've shared most of this code in uh, earlier videos but I'll go over it again and go over the uh, proportional integral derivative um, control loop part of it. Um, so basically when my um, gyroscope, accelerometer, and magnetometer um, have new readings I have it set up so that it will call this function, process new sensor values, and it is given all of those uh, all of those readings. Um, I then take those readings and I uh, give them to the Magic filter. Um, I'm only using the gyroscope and accelerometer right now. I'm not using the magnetometer. And um, what Magic's filter does is it will take the gyroscope and accelerometer readings, and it will apply its um, sensor fusion algorithm to calculate the um, the orientation or the attitude of uh, the robot. And I only really care about the pitch angle, which is, you know, if it's falling over, uh, forward or backward. And there's this formula, which um, I believe it's in the, the documentation for Magix filter, but it's also just um, a very common formula when you're working with uh, quaternions, which is what Magix filter um, outputs. So the pitch is our measurement of uh, reality. Of course, there's some noise in there, but it's you know, basically your, your measurement of reality. And then we need to know the, um, the set point, which is um, your goal or your desired angle. And with this robot, um, again, because I don't have any encoders on the wheels, I'm not able to control velocity. I'm only controlling the angle. Uh, at least so far, I may add uh, encoders later on. So the set point in my case is really, it's going to be zero unless you're applying throttle. And my throttle is on the, um, the Y axis of that handheld transmitter. So I call that gimbal Y. And then I just have some scaling here. So that way, um, when I give it <clears throat> um, full throttle in forward, in the forward direction, um, my set point is basically one tenth of pi. And if I ask for full throttle in the reverse direction, I'll get um, negative one tenth of pi. And that would just pick, um, just kind of visually, that's kind of how much I wanted the robot to tilt whenever I would give it, um, you know, full throttle in one way or another. Um, <clears throat> and then the error is the difference between the two, um, which is the thing that we're trying to control. We want the error to be as low as possible. And it's the difference between, um, 
you know, your measurement of reality, which in my case would be pitch, and your goal, which is um, often called the set point. Um, you may need to do set point minus pitch or pitch minus set point, depending on um, the, um, not polarity, but um, yeah, if, if it becomes negative or positive, um, to make it work out, um, you can just swap uh, the, two, the two components. <clears throat> And then um, basically you need to um, calculate, or not to calculate, you need to um, have a, a gain value for proportional control. And um, in my case, because I was doing this video and I have the three knobs on my transmitter to let me um, change those values live so that I could kind of show you the, the effects in real time, um, I, I included um, the left knob on my transmitter, which is what I used for the proportional gain. And I just scaled that here. And um, it turned out with my, with my particular robot and motors and everything, a proportional gain of about 12,000 worked out pretty well. So how I ended up writing the firmware was I had it to be 12,000 when that left knob was um, kind of in the middle, when it was centered. And then that left knob could also um, affect it by a positive and negative 12,000. So that way I could have a uh, proportional gain uh, between 0 and 24,000. But again, that was mainly just because I wanted to do this visually to kind of show you guys how it all works. Um, you could just hard code this and then guess and check and, um, you know, update your firmware as you go. Um, and then this part again was just because of, um, I was using that knob and I wanted to make sure that if, um, you know, a little bit of ADC noise um, kind of crept in or whatever, that my proportional gain would never go below zero. But again, you wouldn't really need that. <clears throat> And so you finally, um, you basically calculate the proportional component of your throttle, which is going to be your current error multiplied by your proportional gain or um, scalar, whatever you want to call it. In a lot of uh, documentation I've seen, they call it KP, and then they would have KI and KD for the integral and derivative gains. So you might see it referred to like that. Um, and then so that's all for the proportional component. Um, we now have the integral component here. Um, <clears throat> Again, so I have, I found that a, um, a integral gain of about 500 worked out pretty well for my robot, and then I um, applied a scaling factor to my middle uh, potentiometer or knob on the transmitter, so that way it could do uh, plus or minus 500, which would let me um, map the uh, integral gain from zero to a thousand. And again, same thing here. Uh, you don't need to do the checking if it's less than zero. That's just because I'm using that knob, and I wanted to make sure. Uh, nothing was going to surprise me. So you need to have uh, then your accumulator. So uh, in my case, I'm defining it in the function, so I need to make it static. Um, you could also make it a global if you want. <clears throat> and to that integral, you need to add your current error multiplied by your integral um, gain setting. And then um, one important thing you kind of want to do is if you if you just keep doing that, um, what, you can have, what you can have is the integral uh, component can get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, for example, like if the robot has fallen over and it's just accumulating large errors nonstop. And what you want to do is you want to limit that integral component to some am amount. So I kind of picked plus or minus 1,000. Um, it was just kind of guess and checking, but um, basically... Um, you don't want it to get too big. So you can try a small amount, and if it if it basically keeps your integral from helping you out at all, you can increase this uh, limit. Um, and if you set it too high, then for example, um, <clears throat> if I had this at say 10,000, if the robot fell over on its face or on its back, and you then pick it up, um, the integral part will have accumulated so much that it will not balance. It'll just fall over right again. So I found that a thousand worked out pretty well, where it would uh, it wouldn't immediately fall over, but it would still um, it could still um, add up enough to where it could help influence the uh, the control loop. Um, and so they call that integral windup. If you read up on the uh, PID, um, you know, documentation on on Wikipedia or whatever, uh, they'll talk about that. So yeah, I limited plus and minus a thousand. Um, that's all that does. All right, the last part is the derivative. That was kind of the magical part that. Um, 
removed a lot of the uh, oscillations and let you um, ramp up the gain settings for your proportional and integral components. And with the derivative, you need to look at the previous error and the current error. So you need to create a um, either a static variable or a global called a, you know maybe previous error or whatever you want. Um, again, here we have the same thing where we have the uh, the derivative gain, um, and I found that <clears throat> about sixteen thousand worked out really really well for my robot. And then again, I set up uh, things so that way that right knob could um, either add or subtract sixteen thousand on top of it to get a range of zero to thirty two thousand. Um, so the, the derivative component would simply be the current error minus the previous error and multiplied by your derivative gain value. Um, and then you need to update your previous error variable. And that's really all there is to it. So the, um, the derivative component will basically contain the slope and, um, and that's really all there is to it. So I ha had it set up so that my motor speeds would be um, just proportional, integral, and derivative, and it just adds them up, and that's it. So um, like I mentioned earlier, um, I have my PWM code set up so that way positive 1,000 will be full throttle in one direction, and negative 1,000 will be full throttle in another direction. And um, I didn't do any clipping here to plus and minus 1,000, but I actually have that in my uh, PWM code. I have it in, in this code. Um, but yeah, so basically the PID control loop determines the motor speeds, and then to apply steering, I basically add the, um, the steering input to one motor and subtract it to another motor, and that will let it, you know, turn on a dime. And then um, finally, I have um, just a, a little kind of fail-safe logic here, so that way if the robot falls over, it will not keep powering the motors. It will give up and, uh, and just sit there. And then I apply the, uh, the two values to the PWM timers, uh, which will then drive the motors. And again, I've covered how to drive those motors in a previous video as well, um, which I'll have links to all those videos in the uh, description below, as, long, as well as the um, <clears throat> link to the source code. Um, and then I just um, I take all of my um, variables and I send them out on the UART. <clears throat> um, yeah, I send them out on the UART. That way, um, you know, it's transmitted over Bluetooth that I have a Bluetooth module that I have attached to it. And then you could see it on the on the TV or on a computer, and that's about it. So, <clears throat> hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I, I really wanted to make it because when I was trying to develop the balancing robot, I didn't see a lot of videos that would kind of show you visually um, what would happen, both um, in terms of like how the robot would react, and also visually as far as how the waveforms would look, um, which um, I hope it kind of helped you guys out. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. There's links to the source code and the earlier videos on the robot down below. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And um, have fun making a robot or whatever you're um, trying to control.